Hi guys, Tina Gale here, and I thought I would do a little recap. I'm participating in the Low 221 Challenge this month for Layout a Day, which I've always wanted to do, but I always thought was crazy because right now I probably maybe created 20 some odd layouts last year. So what makes me think I can do one every month in February? Well, going into it, I didn't think that I could, but I was certainly going to try and I tried to do things to set me set myself up for success. So I thought I would share some of the things that I did. If you're like me, you work outside of the home, you're busy and you just have limited time and you just let life get in the way. So this may be a little bit longer than normal. This is gonna be me talking and then I'm gonna do a layout share. So if you don't wanna hear my thoughts and all of that, you can skip straight on forward to the layout share. So I'm gonna do it kind of a week at a time. So this is day one through seven for the February load event. So one of the things that I did is, and it's kind of become a week by week. So I've tried to pull pictures and I tried to pull papers and so sometimes they were together and sometimes they weren't it was just collections I wanted to work with or I had put together um, when I organized my papers different bundles of papers like a kit that all the papers coordinated sometimes they were scraps and sometimes they were full sheets so I had some of those that that really inspired me so everything I'm working with that was another thing I tried to pick product that I would be excited to use so that when I come home at the end of the day and I just want to go to bed or I just want to sit down and just veg out that I would be excited to come over and to scrapbook a layout so that was my first thing was making sure that I had photos that I wanted to scrap that would excite me and a large variety of different kinds because I really wanted to to work along with the prompts um, I haven't done as many prompts because I can't, sometimes I can't get them done that day but sometimes I pick them up and do them later or whatever and I will definitely do them um, so photos having papers having kits if you're good at putting kits together then that's a perfect way to be just ahead of the game when it's time to create um, I also tried to clean my work area beforehand and I set up a rest cog cart and one of my organizers with some of the kits and the products that I had and then in between layouts I'm not putting things away it just all goes back if I pull other product out it's going either in the rest cog with the paper or the organizers and I have a couple of different ways which let me just go ahead and share that I have this little bowl up front that has embellishments and things and usually this is just what I have pulled for the layout that I'm working on. But when I'm done, I just throw it over here. Then I set up a couple of other places and I have to work around lights. So um, I have this little box, it's just a pencil box. So all the leftover embellishments that I don't use, they're just getting thrown in here. And so when I worked on the next layout, I would open this up and just go through it. And it's amazing how much product I have used that I would have never used before. It's older product, just odds and ends, because I'm just working out of this and trying not to go to my stash. I also have just this little bin here that when I have all of my leftover cutoffs, I'm just throwing in here. And oh my gosh, I've been looking all morning for that paper, and there it is. Okay, so this is just scraps and I have actually came in here one night when I didn't have something picked out for paper I had run out of kits that I had for the week and I just pulled out coordinating scraps of paper and I put together a layout the other box I have on my desk which is a little bit heavier are embellishments that I had picked out that coordinate with the kits that I had made or the collections that I had so I just put them in here and so I work out of this box too that's pretty much the product that I have that's near me that I can just pull. I'm trying to work just on this desk. I have two work areas in my studio and way too much product. So I'm trying to really just stay focused and not go digging because I can spend all day looking for the perfect product. Um, and I am amazed at how fast I've put together layouts. Um, so it really shows me there's no reason why I can't scrapbook. But those little things right there are saving me it's using up my stash it's just really exciting so let's go through the layout share and I'll share a little bit if I did the prompts or you know kind of what I did for the day so this was 
um, day one, which it was on a weekend. I, th I believe it was a Saturday on the February 1st. Um, so I, I was at home, so I spent a lot more time on this layout, and that's okay with me. That was another thing I had in my mind. During the week, it's going to be quick. I just want to get a layout done. I want to love it, but it needs to be done and uploaded and all of that. Weekends, I can play more. I went to my stash and pulled a lot of stuff. But this layout, I'm going to have, um, and it may already be up, the process video and it's a little bit different but I had to just give up the idea of trying to do process videos um, and I have enjoyed scrapbooking a lot more I'm really sorry to say that but I've gotten a lot more done because I'm not stressing about doing the process video so hopefully you'll enjoy the layout shares so this has lots of Cosmo Cricut and October afternoon that's basically everything that's on this layout so this is some really old product, but it's very much loved. And I love how this turned out. So the prompt this day was The Boy Who Lived. And I had a few different ideas to do on this, and I, and I tucked away the other ideas to do later. But I decided to do it about my son because he inspires me, and he just has always, from day one, just lived life to the fullest. He gets every ounce of life out. And he is contagious around the people, you know, to the people around him. And he's just always been so happy. So he's an inspiration to me. So this is the one I did. And I had these photos and I was going to scrapbook. This was taken um, on a day that we were together as a family. We'd went to church and we were going to dinner. I can't remember if it was Father's Day or what, but it was some kind of event. So I was going to scrapbook them just as that day. But these photos... There's so much story behind these, and you can kind of tell his little orneriness in his face. He hates his photo taken, and so I was trying to get him to just let me get one photo and to smile, and he's just giving me the attitude, and I just kept on, and he finally broke and just kind of cracked up and just gave in. So we, we got one, a really good one, where he's smiling. But that just really shows his personality. Um, so I did the title from the prompt, The Boy Who Lives Life. I added wood veneer in different sizes to, sh to represent him growing up. I had so much to say that it has hidden journaling and it's not really hidden. It's, it's not anything personal or too personal, um, but it's on there. And I actually have more to say that I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to put it in there. But I believe I shared a little bit more about that, so I'm not, I'm not going to do too much more. We also have techniques, and that was circles, lightning bolts, or someone you love. So, of course, I did someone you love, and I tried to pull in circles. So the compass went along with the story. Also, this pattern paper has little circle flowers. So kind of pulled that little technique in. So, again, it was a weekend. I could kind of play and linger a little bit longer. Day two was... Have you ever tried to prevent something from happening or did it happen anyways or have you tried to resist something? So I had so many ideas. In fact, I have four different ideas and so the other three are tucked away. But I ended up going with this layout because I had these adorable little photos of our, our new little doggy and my husband that resisted getting another pet. He just listened to me as I tried to find a dog and I just kept looking and looking and um, searching through the rescue centers and stuff and he just humored me and then I finally just hopped in the car and took him and we went looking we actually went looking for at a different dog but we came home with this little bundle of joy and so he went from resisting, he did not want to get another pet this late in our lives and stuff, he wanted to be able to travel and do stuff without worrying about a dog, to he has stolen my dog, and now the dog is more attached to him than she is to me, and it really irritates me. So I, again, pulled out this paper, it was really old, it's really thin, but I cut it apart, and did that, just lined the photos up because I wanted all of them, it just shows her personality. And then for the title, again, I struggle with titles, um, but it's great when I'm working, when I'm getting to work with the prompt, I get to pull some of that. And so I did, how could you resist? And so that's the story. And again, I had so much to say, it would have taken away from the layout. So I wrote it on a tag. And again, it's front and back and it's just tucked behind in there. So super cute, I love this. And this was one, this was scraps of paper from Happy Day. I think it's called Happy Days from Fancy Pants. 
or good old days maybe. Um, so I just had some of that left over from a layout and so that's what I used on it. And again, a lot of old stash that has been around. I had these little brads here that's got a mustache and it says Lucky because I think we are incredibly lucky to have found her and she is incredibly lucky to have found us too. And the little mustache because she's a schnauzer and so she has her little mustache. Um, so again, those were done on Saturday and Sunday when I had more time to play with the prompts and to really get into it. The techniques on this one was feathers or postage stamp and it was so funny because in this good old days collection there was this postage stamp die cut which normally I would have like where am I ever going to put that but since it was part of the technique it's a perfect little add-on in there and it just built into the cluster. So again another little happy add-on that it wouldn't have made the layout had it not been for the load event. All right, day three um, was back to work, crazy. So I had this photo setting out. This is a photo of my aunt and uncle at their 70th anniversary party that um, their family did for them. And I just think it's incredible. And they've, even though they live further away from us, they were really involved and visited it a lot while I was growing up and, and have up until the last few years when they've gotten older and don't travel as far now. Um, so they mean a lot to me. So I wanted to um, add their photos and have it in my albums. So this was one, these were all kind of scraps and I just cut them out and made some strips and a little block back here. You can see I haven't put the journaling on yet because again, this is personal and you know I don't wanna be sharing their information or anything. So I have it written down to put on there when I'm finished sharing publicly on this. So this one did not go along with the prompt. Um, and I'm trying to think, yeah, and it didn't even do the technique. So this was just a layout that day. I just had fun layering and using up some kits. So this was a Simple Stories collection from one of my scrap room kits. And you can see the products still out on my desk in the Rascog or whatever. So the next day I'm able to pull it together. So all of these top strips are from the Simple Stories collection. This is from that Fancy Pants Good Old Days collection that this was pulled from. So by having that product there, it all coordinates and I could just pull it together and create a layout. So you can see these photos are from the same day as the one that I did about him. But this is all about my kids, my family. These are my people. They little ornery thing. So it's just a fun, lighthearted story about my kids and our relationship. So on this day, um, this was day four, we were supposed to do like best day ever balloons and banners or, um, you know, a favorite experience. Well, any time with my kids is the best day ever. So that kind of went along with the prompt and stuff a little loosely. Day five, was scrapbook about a moment of awe and wonder um and it kind of went off it says where were you when you wish you'd had eight eyes to take it all in and then technique was use a representation for money it could be green gold silver bronze anything like that so i just kind of ran with the word wonder so this was a layout again i would have scrapbooked these photos would have told the story about the day at work where we kind of dressed up um, I, it was a halloween party so we did different things but the journaling and everything went off a whole different way so i can still tell the story you know a little short yes i dressed up as clark kent at work blah 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 but i turned it into all about the wonder and the journaling is clark kent isn't the only one with superpowers I wonder sometimes how I did it all, raising two rambunctious kids, owning a business, homeschooling, running a home, and juggling life. And then I'm reminded I could do it all because of my amazing family, my friends, my church, and faith in God. So it's all about, you know, where I have come from and while I was raising my family and, you know, it was tough sometimes, but so I would have never done that story with those photos had it not been for the load. So I thought that was really fun. Some other really interesting things about this layout. Fun things. 
these little stars here is one of those um, punches that you can punch in the page so it's just a little square punch you have the base underneath and then you put that one on top and you punch I'd been wanting to use it and I hadn't um, so I thought it was a perfect way to get this in I wanted to add lots of stars so I just punched it here and punched it here and then the red background shows through um, and then I took some of the the um, red paper that I had and punched it again so that I could have just a few of those little stars and scattered them around and then there are some blue ones from this that punched out so I thought that was fun um, let's see and then I splattered it with gold for the technique I had this flare here this is an old basic gray flare with the telephone which I thought was perfect kind of going along with Superman and you know going into the phone booth I added the little wood veneer of the woman um, because if you've seen the little meme about you know you always thought that was a dress but it was really a cape so I thought that was kind of a fun play on it so again just pulling in lots of different things for the meanings of the layout that I normally probably would not have then this day let's see we're on day six and this was about scrapbooking about a search or a discovery and you could add wood, gr wood grain, wood veneer, or do br brilliant reds and yellows, I'm sorry. So I did a wood veneer. I also did the reds and the yellows, even though it's not overpowering to the page, I did put those in. And then the search or the discovery is this stupid cat of ours, um, thinks it's a dog. So it's all the time going into our big dog's dog house. We had thrown the little dog bed from out from the inside of the house outside and we were going to air it out and beat it and do all that she grabbed or he grabs it takes off with it and lays on it so he really does act like a dog so this was all the story about him i had three by four cards i have a whole little bin of them i had a goal if i wanted to start using them so i picked out several coordinating ones so this is from the um, simple stories it was grow something grow so it had gnomes and all of that it's from a few years ago and then these are from a fancy pants collection so they go really well together um, one of the papers had all these circles so I just punched them and used them to go into the cluster bases I had this little chipboard kitty cat that was um, I had reorganized some embellishment so I put some themes together because I wasn't using them so I had a page that had all different kinds of animals so I was able to find that cat really quick put it on a page um, yeah and I have this really really old printed vellum that was all these cat phrases it's been in my stash forever needed to go but I thought well it's perfect little background it has that black and white pop so I just put it on top of pink so it toned the pink down so that was a fun layout story in the books and then for day seven was um, the prompt was about nemesis which I don't have but the technique was to use tension of dark versus light and cr you could create a split page half light half dark so I did with the technique I have light and then I have dark down here this is the same day that we dressed up at work so this is one of our um, lead shippers and lead production lines and then this is our production manager and um, he's her boss that's over part of our production too so these two are bosses and they decided to dress up as their bosses and this one right here this is a woman and she absolutely nailed it she had it down to a T to our boss um, so it was amazing um, to see all them out in the warehouse and doing that um, so I just told a little story about that it's not any really big thing but it's a moment in this last year that was hilarious that's um, you know I've been there almost three years now so he means a lot to me he stood behind me and uh, he's an he's an awesome boss I mean he's like way up he's not directly over me but he's he could fire me so um, but he's amazing boss so I wanted to make sure that that was a story that was told in my albums so this is one I took 
papers. This was late in the evening. It was a, a day that I came home late from work. I would have normally just skipped this and went, I'm too tired. I don't want to do anything, but I was pushed. Like I've made it six days. I can make it seven. So I reached over to my scrap bin, just pulled out papers. And again, I, I had this big piece. So it was, you know, light, dark. That's where I started with. And then I just thought, well, I can just put some border strips here. Um, had all these little scraps in there, just picked out some black and white ones and then just that touch of wood grain to give it just a little bit of color because otherwise it had been really plain and probably ugly. Um, and it, it kind of fits in with the warehouse side of, of where I work and, and those and then the chemicals because I work in a, a place where we make and work with chemicals. Um, so all of that kind of tied in. So very quick, very simple, just using my scraps that were on my table. But it's a story told and it's another page done for layout a day. So that is week one layouts. So you can tell they're not like bare minimum skimpy. They all have journaling on them, except for the one that's just not written on there yet. Um, they all have titles, so they're completed layouts. And a lot of times when I was creating, I wasn't getting to the journaling. I would just set it aside and think I'll do it someday, but nope. We're going to get the journaling on there. So you'll see week two, I might have got a little bit skimpier, but for week one, this is it. Hope you enjoyed that. Love to hear your thoughts. If you're joining in on load, let me know so I can kind of look for your layouts in the gallery and comment on your pages there. Um, if you want to follow along, I am trying to post on Instagram as I get my daily layouts done because videos just kind of have to wait. So they'll be a little bit delayed. So you can follow me on Instagram and see my progress and see how far I'm going to make it. So have a great day and I will see you again for week two of load.